All right, hello everybody. Welcome to Friday and to the films that I watched this week. It is blowing a gale outside. I feel like the house may blow down. But anyway, the films I watched this week from 2007, a film called Knocked Up, Seth Rogen. Catherine Heigl. Um, Catherine Heigl's a news reporter. Seth Rogen is basically a loser. They have a one night stand. She gets pregnant. And then they deal with that. And you've got some of Seth Rogen's stupid friends in it. He is stupid. I give the film a five. It's one I've always heard about. But never bothered to watch it because of the people in it. But I decided, eh, you may as well watch it, can't hurt. And I watched it, meh, a five. That was a first time watch. This is also a first time watch from 1995, Bullet to Beijing. Not quite what I thought it would be. But Michael Caine, Harry Palmer. Um, in films like The Ipcris File. And this is another installment of the Harry Palmer character which I didn't know that but anyway it doesn't matter he gets retired from his job and he gets another job working for the Russians who is Michael Gambon Michael Gambon is a Russian to find a bioweapon that's been stolen there's plenty of action in it felt like a TV film um, Michael Caine is as usual quite good and I gave it a 6 out of a 10. Nothing amazing. I, I kind of hoped it would be all set on the train. But it wasn't so never mind. But alright. Then I watched Star Trek Generations from 1994. The one where Kirk and Picard meet. The two iconic captains meet in a fabrication. In a nexus making eggs. Kind of plodding. Kind of dull kind of like an extended tv episode which i don't mind but at the same time i do mind um it's not great but i don't think it's the worst of the four films that they did um i do like the stuff at the beginning on 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 the on the boat on the holodeck when he makes wharf water plank but it's all right i give it a six nothing nothing wow very few of these films this week are wow then from 1965, the Bedford Incident. Um, a US destroyer discovers a Russian submarine. The captain, who is Richard Widmark, determined to confront it, possibly bring in war. Um, Sidney Poitier is a reporter, and it's well acted, well done. Richard Widmark is good, Sidney Poitier is good. Um, and the ending was like, shit. But I give that one a six. Then a snooze fest. If you took a nap, you wouldn't miss anything in this. From 2022, Eradication. Also a first watch. Virus kills the world. Sounds familiar. One man has this unique blood. He's quarantined in a house, studied. Um, one thing leads to another, and he goes out into the world. And then maybe it's mildly entertaining, but... It's just fucking boring. I give it a four. 2022. Then a film I recommended a couple of days ago, but they took the video down. Charlie Chaplin's Limelight, an eight. A very good film. From 1955, for humour, a very standard Western. Uh, a first watch. Very just ordinary. Apaches dress up as cavalry soldiers to attack a fort. It's just it's just a bog standard, substandard, ordinary western with no memorable stuff in it. Give it a five. Then another first watch, a black exploitation film with Pam Greer called Coffee. I'm sure everyone's seen Coffee. She's a vigilante who goes around shooting pimps and shooting drug dealers and just deals with these people for a sister. Entertaining, colourful, vibrant, theatrical. Um 
a 6 out of a 10 from 1973. I liked it. thought Pam Greer was pretty good and looked very nice. Then a... No, that's not right. Then... Oh, from 2016, a film called Cell. Again, not what I thought it would be. It has John Cusack and Samuel L. Jackson in it. Um, first time watch. A strange signal comes through every mobile phone which turns the people into bloodthirsty killers. They get a pulse through their mobile device, they scream, then suddenly they, they turn into what reminded me of the the I don't know the infected from twenty eight days later and they run around killing people, trying to bite people, they hunt in packs. Started off really fun. I thought I'm gonna like this. And as it went on it went and it ended up a five out of a ten. Which was a shame. Then another film similarly named called The Cell from two thousand with Jennifer Lopez, Vince Vaughan. Jennifer Lopez, bleh, Jennifer Lopez is a psychotherapist, but she they use virtual reality. They put you in a suit, suspend you from the ceiling, and you can go into the minds of people to bring them out of a coma, things like that. But she must go into the mind of a comatose serial killer to save his latest victim. No one knows where his latest victim is. He's comatose. He's gone. And she goes into his mind. And you get into the mind of some weird shit. Art direction, set design, superb. But it's fucking weird. But I gave it a 6 out of a 10. And it's the film that if you ever thought it was impossible to make Jennifer Lopez look like a dowdy old bird. She looked like a dowdy old bird in this. But from 2000, I give it a 6. Interesting inside the minds of these people. Weird as fuck that it is. Just, it was alright. All right, then to end the week from 2021, M. Night Shyamalan's Old. One of those films where time is different. They're on a beach. A bunch of people go to a beach, find out time moves quickly, moves faster. So everyone's going to go old. Everyone's going to die very soon. Kids that were six turn out to be, I don't know, 15. They grow and... I like the idea. I've seen this idea in other films. So it's an interesting idea, nice location. But the people, I didn't like any of them. I don't give a shit if these people escape the beach. I don't care. I don't care if that person died over there or that person dead. You know, they were annoying before they got onto the beach and then they got onto the beach and they shit themselves and, and panic sets in and everything's going crazy. I understand that, but there's no one for me to root for or like in this film. And the twist ending was very meh. Could you not have thought of something better than that? Very disappointing. Well, I'd give it a 5 out of a 10. Um, then again, I'm not a great fan of M. Night Shyamalan. All of his films, I just think, they range from that was shit to meh. So that's everything I watched this week. And I'll see you next week.